everybody. Hey, after a long hiatus, 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 hiatus. Yeah, <laughs> it's been it's been a minute. So uh, we are back with Graham. He was our third episode of For Real, and we are so happy to have him on. Unfortunately, not exactly the story we're looking for, but I think it's really, really important that we have uh, such a good individual from the community to come on and tell his story about how he was taken advantage of um, yeah. and, and let everybody know that, you know, don't let this happen to you. But support Graham and his family and his his fiance, right? Yep. Yep. And and their kids. So, uh, Graham, thanks for coming on. Sorry about the the fiasco you've been through, and I'm sure everybody's seen it that knows who you are. But you know, thank you again for coming on. Anytime, man. I think um, just an important sort of story. I think that needs to be heard. Yeah. Because you know, it was something I never expected anyway, and. Um, something I was really sort of excited and had the balls to try and, you know, achieve and do up sticks and move my family to the other side of the world, you know, yeah. and um, try and make something of this passion that we've all got. And um, yeah. it went south pretty quickly, but, um, you know, I went out there not expecting to, these things to happen, but maybe some people could learn, you know, from this experience. Yeah. So I think I think if we take it right back to the beginning, it's, mm -hmm. you're going back to May 2017 okay. is when I was first um, I was online friends with Randall Berry for a while. Okay. Randall, you know, um, I don't know a lot of people know who Randall is. You know, he's an ex. Um, he worked, used to work for Tom Crutchfield as his manager. Okay. And Randall was also um, he worked at the Little Rock Zoo as a reptile keeper. Okay. Many years. Um, Randall sort of, you know, he, he put this idea to me that he had a guy he knows down in Hot Springs, Arkansas, who was, um, who wanted to open a reptile attraction, like a zoo, a mini zoo type attraction. Mm -hmm. um, so Randall made the introductions and said, I've got this guy in the UK, in Liverpool, who's really passionate, you know, he knows his snakes, he's, you know, really sensible and, you know, re respected and whatnot. So I flew out there and um, we flew out there and did a presentation in front of the town as like an investor sort of a pitch type meeting. There was a US Senator there and stuff like that. And um, we shook hands with everybody and said, we want to build this 28,000 square foot reptile garden. It was called okay. on this plot, on this plot of land in uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Hot Springs, Arkansas is like a tourist town. It's, it's yeah. been like a, a perfect location, you know, for, for an attraction like this, just to take walk-ins and families go there over a weekend and things like that. It would have been, I think it would have been really profitable anyway. So anyway, I was hired as a consultant by Dennis McGee in Hot Springs for this uh, reptile attraction. Now, um, in the four years I've been hired as this consultant, I've never received a penny any payments from mm -hmm. but that's beside the point i was happy to just do this because it was something i wanted to do and i wanted this thing off the ground and to be part of it and you know pay me when we get investors whatever yeah yeah you know, it's, none of this thing is out money has never been a motivating factor for me in any decision i've ever made in life i'm terrible with money i've never been able to save you know, I live in a rented house with my family and we're just trying to make ends meet the best way we can. Yeah. As a lot of people are, you know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, we've flown out there a second time. Um, Dennis told me he had an investor for this thing and the, uh, the investor wanted to fly us out and meet us and all of this stuff. So we went out there again in 2019 and the investment fell through or something went wrong with it or the, the the investor wasn't willing to put up the money he said he was going to do and all of this babble which is what dennis fed me at the time mm -hmm. um so anyway we came home and i was still patient and said look you know i'll i'll wait as long as it takes to get this thing off the ground i'll just carry on plodding along and you know in the end we'll all look back and when it does happen we'll say you know i was there loyal you know, from yeah. the start. Now, Randall Berry dropped off pretty quick from this. Randall was um, 
Randall likes to drink. Randall has a drink yeah. and like a weird worm gets inside his head and he starts doing crazy things and acting immature and building fake online profiles to try and like stir up whatever he wants to do. There was a time where I mean I love I I used to love Randall. I mean I thought he was a funny guy, you know, very, very intelligent man. Mm-hmm. Especially with, with reptiles. But once he has those couple of drinks in him, you're dealing with a difficult person. Like a narcissist, a sociopath. We're talking like crazy you know, paranoid. Yeah. Just just ridiculous behavior for a 70 so, plus year old man. So let, let's rewind just a little bit. For those that, that know me and, and know my platform, you know, I, I'm not a fan of, of stupidity. So obviously Randall worked for Tom. That's check mark number one. Number yeah. two, I, I listen, um, I'm sure my family will give me a little shit for this, but we've dealt with alcoholism as many families have. And yep. when you drink, you are a different person. So that is, is in itself hard enough. So from 2017 to 2019, I assume at that point, we, you guys were looking for investors. And obviously for something like this, it, it's not like you're gonna just send out one email and somebody's gonna just throw a case full of money at you. I mean, no. it's, it's a hard sell. I mean, we all know that our passion is reptile keepers and even Tom's passion and, and all these other chuckleheads, that everybody has that passion. We love our animals, but again, it's people within the community that love the animals outside the community is a little different. They don't understand what we do. So for those that, that watch this and think how bad could it have been? Think about it this way, pick something you're passionate about and think, how would you go about turning that into something profitable? I did it with my best friend, Jared uh, years ago with the paintball league. And we took, I mean, When I say we took no money, we took no money. We put money in from our pockets. We, all of our time, 50,000 miles on our vehicles in six months. You know, we did all this for nothing just because we loved it and it fell apart. And people don't realize the stress that's involved in that and what it can do to a family. And, you know, I I had to say that at this point because it's big leading through this. Yeah. So, okay. So, so in 2019, the deal falls through. Yep, and um, we just came home again, and we we just thought, you know, we're gonna we're gonna carry on trying to source investors. I was constantly sending business plans out to various investment groups and mm-hmm. developers who were like involved in certain things over there, hotels and stuff like that. Maybe they wanted to, you know, put some into the pot for this thing. So I was I was working as a consultant, and I was doing my job, trying mm-hmm. to get investors, you know, trying to. Trying to get this thing off the ground, I set up a page. I, I, I was putting it out there. I was doing promotion for it all, and in the end, it, it got to a point where we had this uh, this um, development group from Dallas, Texas, called Big World Developments, jump on and say they wanted to do it. They wanted me as Dennis's second in command. Mm-hmm. Um, we were going to throw big money at it. They wanted several locations, one in Costa Rica, one couple in Texas, you know, one in Vegas, they said they wanted. And they wanted to call it something else, uh, Komodo Village. And we were, you know, really excited about all of this. You know, several zoos as, as opposed to one. One was a big enough task to try and get investment for, but now we've got this development firm on board who, who want to do it all. But then COVID hit. So the excuse from them was, you know, all of, all of our projected projects are now on the back burner. Is there anything else you guys want to do? Now, I'd, I'd made a business plan for a commercial reptile breeding facility as a sort of, as a plan B. Mm-hmm. You know, and the costs were less. The, ret- the ROI, the return on investment was higher. Mm-hmm. This was, an, a, this was a, a business plan that I, I've got no business qualifications you know, I'm a, I work in a warehouse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the first thing about it, but I spent the time and put this together, and I sent it to those guys out there. Now, instantly, we got an investor, and it was another guy from Texas who was friends with this this big world development group. 
who wanted to do it and he was on the phone to me and he was on the phone to Dennis saying, I want to do this, you know, should we do it? And then I never heard anything. Dennis took over the communication with this guy. Like, so I, I was just hearing everything secondhand. Mm -hmm. So I found out a few weeks later that Dennis had rejected the idea of this breeding facility because it wasn't his reptile attraction. So I kind of stung a little bit, but I thought, hang on. I can make this my opportunity because it was my business yeah. plan and my idea. I'm going to get hold of the investor myself and I'm going to get this deal back on the table. I'm going to call the investor. He said, mm, I'm going to use the property we've got in mind for something else now. I think, I've, you know, I've lost interest. Dennis's attitude towards it has been terrible. I mean, he's over there not telling me all of this, that he's done all of this and, and yeah. this guy away. And I'm over here just waiting to hear some communication, which I'm not hearing from Dennis or anybody. So that really hurts. And I was like, why doesn't he want me to have this opportunity? Why why can't I just get something? Because he knew my dream was to move my family to the States and like have a you know more of a wholesome way of life or whatnot than what we've got here in the UK. So I was I was like, you know, why why would you sort of write that off for me without even asking me first? Yeah. So I got hold of the investor myself and said, look, I want to do this. This was my business plan. You know, we can do it. I've got animals I can put into the business. I can come out there, move my family out there, and we can get going, you know. And he was like, in the end, he, he turned around and said, great. You know, he said, what, well, you know, what, when can you get out here? Well, at the time, COVID was like, there was no way of getting into the US. Yeah. Yeah. By any means, you know. There was no way of doing it. So he was kind of pressuring me to get out there as soon as I could. And we didn't know that the, uh, the US had like, just shut its borders. We'd already booked flights to get out there, flights that we couldn't cancel. So we yeah. lost, a couple of lost a couple of grand initially yeah. just, on, just on flights that we couldn't use. Yeah. And uh, then Jamaica opened up. And what we had to do, from the, if you're coming from the UK, to the US, you had to quarantine in, in another country for 14 days. So we went to Jamaica, paid for ourselves to get to Jamaica. That cost about seven grand of our money, you know, of our savings, but we were willing to do it. Um, don't get me wrong, the guy was paying me a, like a small salary because I'd quit my job for this. And yeah, you know, he, he was paying me as like an overseas consultant at the time. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't in the States and my immigration wasn't done yet and all of that stuff. But he said, get out here and we'll fix your immigration as soon as you get out here, you know. We'll get you a work permit and whatnot. So we went to Jamaica. We got our visas to get into the US cancelled three times. So we had yeah. to be rejected at the airport like three days on the run. And it was just, do we go home? You know, it was just so stressful of... Yeah, I've seen it. Seen everyone getting on the on the flight to the US, and then we're sat there in the airport with our bags, ordering a cab to go back to the hotel and and pay for an extra three nights again. Every day we had to pay for an extra night at the hotel. So it was just, you know, it was like a red flag. You know, why are we doing this? Well, you know, well, Amy, my partner, knew what it meant to me, and she was, let's just try one more time. So we did. Yeah. We, we, we booked the visas again, paid for those again, paid for flights again to the US, and they let us through for some reason, to like the third time. So we got there, and um, the investor said, well, I'm going to come and meet you in the week. We got to our apartments. We've been paying rent on this apartment since we booked the first flight oh. months months before. Because wow. we wanted the, We wanted this apartment to, like, yeah. just somewhere to just, where we could just, move into you know yeah so that, that, that was about five months of paying rent on a place we weren't even staying in yet yeah so you know nobody else could snatch it up so we got there anyway but it was it was weird because when we got to the airport dennis came and picked us up and it was like 11 p.m at night and the investor originally had a large old flea market building planned out for this uh, breeding facility. It was 13,000 square foot. It was huge. A great space. Yeah, yeah. Now, what he, what he asked Dennis to do, why I was still in the UK, 
was to um, go and see the planning commission in town and get it approved and put a you know application in you know for what we want to do and um, you know basically just tidy the place up and then wait for cages and stuff from my buddy Chris Foley to arrive. Now apparently I Dennis wasn't telling me anything while he was doing all of this, but apparently he was being really really difficult about it all. You know he was. He was trying to shake the investor down for money on certain things and saying this is costing me and I'm putting my own money into it, which he was getting he was getting sent money anyway, but he constantly wanted more, more, more. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden a bunch of emails came through from like supposed neighbor businesses and residents in the town saying they were totally opposed to this breeding thing. I thought something something's off here. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, you know, and apparently these emails went to the planning commission as well. So they were sort of, apparently Dennis had a, a uh, sort of under the table word from somebody in the plan, in the planning commission not to go through with it because it, it's not going to pass. So last minute, the day before it was due to be reviewed, he ran down to the, to the planning commission and pulled the application without asking anybody, he just did it. So that was, the investor has put his time and money and in, into leasing this place for that. And Dennis, without even asking him, has pulled the planner on an um, application on him. So the investor and Dennis instantly fell out. That was, yeah. The invest Dennis was Dennis was part of the equity in the company because I brought okay. him back in. Okay. And he, was, and he was due to get a salary as well because I brought him back in. And when this okay. happened, I was getting I was getting phone calls from the investor saying, "We know you love Dennis. We know he's your friend, but we want him out. He's being too difficult. He's acting like a petulant school kid. We don't want him involved anymore." I said, "Well, I'm not happy about it, but if that's the yeah. way you feel, yeah, you really then, don't have a choice. The investor no. says what they want." Well, I planned on giving Dennis half of my salary anyway and half of yeah. my equity, you know. Anything I would have made annually, I would have gave him half. And which, he knew that. Which is the sad part. That's, mm. I, I think that's, in my opinion, because it's not me, that would have, that would have probably hurt me the most, yeah. is to know how much, you know, so, so let me put this into perspective for people that don't necessarily have any idea what a breeding facility would be, you guys. This is a facility where you're going to bring animals in, produce babies, and sell those to the public. So it's going to be profitable. The part that baffles me is, is okay, so we have COVID, and, and let's just get this facility open, and it's going to start generating income. And then the other projects will come back online as we go. That's not changed. Exactly. So to me, and, and I've followed this. I mean, obviously, we've talked quite a bit. Um, yeah. I don't know these guys from Adam other than what I've seen. Um, I, I don't really pass judgment on people. There's always two sides of a story, but sure. what looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, shits like a duck, is a duck. <laughs> and unfortunately, these are things that you really can't dispute. So, yeah. so at this point, he's gone to the planning board. He's pulled your permit or he's pulled the application for the permit because yep. apparently he's got inside information. Um, and from there, what, what happens? Well, the, um, the investor basically threw all of his toys out of the pram and said, we don't want Dennis involved. I want him out. I don't want anything to do with him. I've, I've invested too much money into this building as it is. Mm -hmm. We need to find another location in the county that's not in the city limits. So we found one and it was two suites which was about, I think it equated to about three and a half thousand square foot, which was a lot smaller space, but these these suites were really nice and we could mm -hmm. frame them out, put rooms in, like you saw, we yep. uh, designed the venomous room with the, the, the color coding system in each room, yep. things like that, you know, everything I was, I, I had a vision in my mind of what I wanted this to be, you know, and I was excited about it and, you know, I couldn't wait to get started. So. I wanted to get out there and start work the next day. 
But as soon as we get out there, Dennis is um, Dennis took me to the old building, which his friend is the one who was leasing it to our investor. Now he was leasing this building on a land contract, which I don't know whether you're familiar with land contracts. It's like a way of owner financing. Okay. Um, so there's no like, if he doesn't make the payments on the building, these guys could always just pull the rug from under him and take the building back. Mm -hmm. I think this is this is a, a a scam that they've got going with a, a lot of properties out there. They just take them back off people if they don't make a payment, and they've either way they're making money, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they they knew all along they could just take the building off him. I think he stopped paying payments on it, but anyway, when Dennis pulled the permits, yeah. So basically, what they said to him is, "We're going to take your properties back." Um. And he was like, well, what can I do? But um, I got out there, and as soon as I got out there, Dennis, from the airport, se separated me and Amy into two cars, took me to the original building, and started walking me around it, saying, oh, I think we can have a pet shop in here, a really nice pet shop. I was thinking, what the fuck are you talking about, a pet shop? I'm here to do this breeding facility, you know? Yeah. This... I thought we didn't get approval for this thing, you know, what pet shop, basically. But I just brushed it under the carpet and thought, you know, he's old. Like, you know, yeah. I don't know what he, what he's talking about or whatnot. It's just, you know, I wanted to see the investor. And the investor came like a week into me being out there. I'd been down to see the building. A friend of the investor showed me around and showed me, like, what I'd asked the contractors to do myself. I framed the walls out and showed me, you know, all the work that had been done. He asked me where I wanted sinks fit in and things like that. So I was like, I want a sink here, a sink there. I want a, you know, a couple of hoses, retractable hoses, so I can wear cages and fill water dishes and and all of this stuff. You know, things I was I wanted to be efficient in the breeding facility anyway. But um, it got to like a couple of days in, and Dennis asked me to come down to this restaurant to see his friend. Now his friend is the guy who owns the buildings that the investor originally had. Mm -hmm. He's a bit of a property shark, and he sits in this yeah. restaurant all day, drinking and smoking. He's Italian, New York Italian. So okay. you, you think he was in the mafia, you know? So you go into this restaurant, and it's just a cloud of smoke, and he's sitting there drinking all day, you know, from like 10 o'clock in the morning. And this fella just sits there and plots all day how to fuck people over. You know, this whole game of chess as opposed okay. to I'm gonna I'm gonna win this game, I'm gonna play with these people and and in the end it's gonna be me who wins. That's he yeah he has to beat everybody in this thing. Yeah. So this it, I found out quickly found out that my uh -huh. investor owed him it was like one point two million or something. You know, he was in <laughs> he was into uh that much worth of properties anyway. So I'm getting this whole spiel from him that the investor's going to fail. Um, I don't want him to fail, but we think he's going to fail. So somewhere along the line, I'm going to have to step into this business and throw it a lifeline. And I was thinking, I'm naive. I, I mean, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I thought he was sort of being a friend, this, you know, saying, I'm going to help get this business off the ground for you. If this guy fails, you know, yeah. we'll pull it back up and we'll get it going. I didn't really know that they had any selfish interests or anything into it. Now, I prepaid for snakes from a friend in Utah for this uh, business. It was about mm -hmm. $10,000 worth of Borneo short sales. And they all got sent to Dennis's house. Dennis said, let me keep them in mind. I'll take care of them. I've got a big snake house, you know, until we're until the breeding facility is ready. So as any friend would do, I just thought he was being helpful. Yeah, you know? sure. Um, because I'd certainly do that for any of my friends if I had the space anyway. Sure. Um, I shipped my own animals out there, all of my rare projects and things like that. And they all arrived and we got them in racks um, in Dennis's snake house. And um, everything was good. I was going around there, checking them um, daily and, you know, changing the water dishes, taking photographs of them, things like that. Now, um, 
it got to a point where as soon as I, I got out there, the investor stopped sending me any money to survive off, basically. There was no there was no salary per se. And all this talk about getting me a visa suddenly stopped. And mm -hmm. I was wondering what the hell is going on. Mm -hmm. What I didn't realise is these guys were shaking him down for his property debts. Behind my back, I didn't see any of this stuff. Uh, I think they were trying to blackmail him on getting an, getting some equity back into this breeding business. They probably saw the profits in it and, you know, the, uh, the business plan. And they thought, if this guy wants this, you know, then we need to be part of it. So I think they were shaking him down that way. And I think they hurt his pocket, which then hurt my pockets because I just spent all of my money getting to the States. Yeah. So we had a little bit to live on. You know, we were living cheap out there, really. We didn't do much apart from go frigging road cruising every night, which was like the best part of the whole... Yeah, yeah. Like eight, eight weeks out there taking the kids out, you know, every evening catching snakes. But um, it got to a point where I said, we're broke here. We're, we need something to break. You know, what's, what's happening? And... Um, one of the investors' friends from Dallas jumped in and said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna invest two hundred thousand dollars into this business because he's struggling financially. He's struggling financially because these guys were shaking him down on shady property deals. But this guy's friend was gonna step in, really professional businessman, really nice fella, um, and he he seemed like he had a head for business where he was gonna do things properly and get everything structured and and sort of pull it all." Pull it back up anyway. Now, what I found out was that Dennis and his friend, John, the, the guy with the properties, yeah, were trying to make a deal with this guy coming in with the 200 grand. They wanted to put a little bit in themselves and sort of work out the equity between them or whatever. Now, this guy knew of Dennis's friend, John, and knew he was a bit of a shark. So we didn't want anything to do with him involved in this business. He was using his own money and money that his family were willing to put in because the, my business plan was so good and they were happy to do it. And they, mm. we, went out, we went out there and met them. And, um, you know, they could just see that I, it was exactly what I wanted to do. I had an idea in my head of how everything was going to work. You know, I was really just, I just wanted to work reptiles, you know. Yeah. That was and I knew how to do it and I knew how to market it and how to sell them. And everything was sort of like cookie cutter there, ready to go. And I had an idea of how everything was going to run. Now, eventually this friend of my investors rejected Dennis and John, uh, his friend John's offer to, to be part of this thing. He said, I don't want anything to do with that. Yeah. I'm willing to bring you back in Dennis for a salary but you won't yep. get any equity because he's, he knew my relationship with Dennis as a friend. And, and I think he was just trying to keep me sweet and, and, you know, not upset the apple cart or whatever. Yeah. So, but I said to Dennis again, don't worry about equity. I'll freaking give you half of mine. I don't give a shit about money, yeah. you know? And he was like, Oh, well, that's really kind of you, you know, uh, yada, yada. When we went out there to meet him, the first thing Dennis, Dennis said to me, he never wanted any part of a breeding facility. He wasn't interested in it. So I was wondering why the hell was he trying to, like, you know, grab on and, and get what he can. And really, like, you know, I thought he's grabbing with both hands here. And, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll help him along anyway, because if I get, make a success of it, he's going to feel the benefits as well. Yeah, but exactly. It wasn't good enough for him. Now, all he had to do is sign a new contract with him, um, sign himself out of the original equity deal. Mm -hmm. And this new contract sort of voided the old one, gave me a percentage equity. I would have had 10% of the whole company and would have paid me $150,000 a year. Now, that is ridiculous money yeah. for anybody. That's, that's a fantastic salary. Yep. And I said to Dennis, I'll split it down the middle give you 75 and i'll take 75 you know who else in the world would do yeah. that i'm going to give you five percent for nothing 
just because you're you. And, and listen, this is for, for everybody out there that is into reptiles, understand there are investments out there worth making. Um, but the reptile industry isn't like anything else. It's not an industry where if, if I were to say, here's $200,000, the ROI on that may be two or three years out yep. because you're not talking about, you're not talking about buying a machine and making a product. You're not talking about, we'll just use, cause I'm into 3d printing. We're not talking about buying a hundred thousand dollar 3d printer and getting it installed on Monday. And on Tuesday, it kicks out your first product. And that product is for sale. It, it doesn't work that way in reptiles. So everybody that's in the reptile industry needs to understand these are, these are the slippery slopes. And again, I'm sure there's other people, Graham, that have, have done this and just they're embarrassed, which don't be. If you love something and you want it, listen, go for it. That's what no this shame. is. That's what your life is about. Listen, everybody fails at something. Own that failure and make it make you better. Right. Exactly. And, and listen, I mean, so, so back to where we're at at this point. Now, it, this is the part that gets me. We went from Komodo Village with hotels yeah. to Dennis not getting what he wanted and saying, no, I don't want any part of a breeding facility to, yeah. hey, Graham, come check this out. It could be a pet store, which mm -hmm. now when I say this, this may sound wrong, but in my mind, if you went to the town and said we want to do a breeding facility and they said no, because we don't want some closed, private, crazy breeding facility. The easy around that is, okay, we want to open up a pet store. Is that okay? Yeah, you could open up a pet store. And then you put the breeding facility in the back and nobody knows any different and everybody's happy. But exactly. this guy wanted nothing to do with the breeding facility and never came back and said, hey, listen, this is our go around. Yeah. And to the point where you've literally said, hey, I'm going to give you half of my shit. Pardon the expression. And my wife is going to be good with this. Now, listen, if I told somebody I was going to give them half of my salary, my wife would take both of my nuts. That's <laughs> how that would work. Yeah. So God bless her for that. Yeah. It, tons of props. But yeah. it's awesome to see that your wife or your fiance knows this is your passion and she knows you're going to make something of it. And oh, so now at this point, funny, beginning, yeah. So now at this point, I'm going to give you half. Everything is seeming okay at this yeah. point. Okay. Until um, the guy who was willing to put the 200 grand in one wanted no part of Dennis's friend with the, with the property business. That's when Dennis refused to sign this new um, sort of equity distribution form. He said, I'm refusing to sign it. I don't like it. And, and I said, as soon as you sign this, I'm going to start getting a salary again, and I'm going to be able to survive, and I'm not going to have to go home. If you don't sign it, we're going to have to go home broke and not do anything, and you're going to pull the whole business down. I signed right away. Now, he was mm. warning me not to sign. And I said, what are you talking about? I'm signing it. This is my business. Yeah. This is what I want to do. If you're not interested, don't friggin' do it. But I'm broke, so I'm going to sign it signed it he refused and i said i got i got pissed off we had a bit of a argument amy was there to calm me down he said i'm not signing it i said well i'll tell you what then all of these snakes in here that are mine i'm going to start advertising them and i'm going to sell them all and i'm going to use the money to go back home and get us back on our feet because this has obviously all failed he was a little bit disgruntled, but we took the kids to the park and I cooled my head down. And I remember it vividly because we were standing in the park, this beautiful park in Hot Springs. And he called me on the phone. He said, Graham, we need to talk. I said, look, I'm not in the mood to talk. I said, I've, I've got my snakes there. You know, I just spent six grand on Parviocular, 1.2 Parviocular, which was like my dream snake that I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to work with, and that was like a sort of landmark species that would have put us as a breeding facility on the map if we could have reproduced those. Yeah. I said, 
I'm going to I'm going to sell those parviocular. I don't want to talk. I'm going to sell them and I'll speak to you when I can. And I hung up the phone on him. Now I had a key for his snake house. And Amy said to me, I don't like what's going on. Something strange is happening. Mm -hmm. Um, You need to go around there tomorrow morning and get your parviocular out there, out of there and get them sold. I won't say who I sold them to. A lot of people already know, but I was also speaking to Chris Foley, my Cajun guy throughout this whole ordeal and I'm yeah. telling him everything. He was there as a, he was a shoulder and I, That's I haven't awesome. given him enough, I haven't given him enough props for this yet, but he coached and guided me through the whole thing because he basically read it like a script, everything that was going on day by day. And I don't think without his guidance, we'd have got out there in the same shape that we did. But I went around the next morning to get my parviocular out of his snake house. I went keep. I wasn't keeping them in, in our apartment because I didn't mm-hmm. want them around the kids. Yeah, I never had the space anyway. Otherwise, yeah. I would have kept all all of my stuff in there. Sure, sure. Why wouldn't you? I went around about seven thirty in the morning, put my key in the lock. I went. That's funny. It doesn't fit. What's going on? Jiggled it again. Tried another key. Didn't work. He's changed the locks. And my heart sank. I thought, wow. Mm-hmm. What I've done for the, what I've done for this fella. Yeah. I've been loyal for four years. I've tried to help him. I offered him half. I've I've worshipped the guy like a family member. Yeah. And looked up to him. And he he's locked me out. Now I'm trying to get access to my own property here my own animals yeah. he's locked me out like i'm some dirty little thief and that was just i went back home there was a sign on the door a note he'd written graham if you want to talk please call me i just i went back to uh our apartment amy was still in bed with the kids and i walked in and she just saw my face and i was just white she mm-hmm. said what the hell has happened i said he's changed the locks she went, oh, my God. More importantly, I'd already sold the snakes. Yeah. The calves, so I'd, I'd got the money for them, and that was for a flight home because we just wanted out of there. Yeah. And um, so one way or the other, I had to get in there and get those snakes out. I was speaking to Foley. He said, just go in, approach him, ask him what's going on. He's not going to forcibly stop you from getting those paths or whatever. You know, he's an old man. Yada yada. We walked around there as a family and we said, we're going to play this cool. We're going to pretend that we didn't know he changed the locks. I said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to ask him why he's changed the locks. So we get to the house, must have been 930 in the morning now. And he's sitting there on his rocking chair, guarding the snake house. And he gives me this look and it was like, I was looking at a totally different person I've never seen before. Mm-hmm. We went from sweet old man to Mr. Hyde, Jekyll and Hyde, and he looked at me like he gave me this look. And I was I was like, what the fuck is going on with you? Yeah. And I was getting when I lose my temper, Paul, I scare myself. I turn yeah. to I see red and I don't know what I'm capable of. I don't know what I can do. I just fists start flying. You know, I'm yeah, that's that's just the way I am. Yeah. I haven't lost my temper in years. That's I was good. about to. I was about to in this situation in front of my kids and all of that. Wouldn't be proud of it if it did. No. Look, luckily, it never happened. He, st- he said, I knew damn well what I was doing when I changed that lock and all of this crap. I was, you were going to take all those snakes and sell them. I said, if I wanted to sell them snakes, every fucking last one of them, I fucking will. They're mine. He said, I thought me and you were going to build something together. I said, what? I said, I came out here to, to do this breeding thing. You've, at every step of the way, you've tried to collapse it and put the blockers on it and just completely destroy my friggin' dream. There's photos of me if you look back on Facebook. 
me opening the key to the facility on the first day and just the look of stupid joy on my face. Oh, hundred. listen, for those of you that are going to watch this and say, oh, you should have known, scroll back through Graham's Facebook because it's all there. Every yeah. single step of this whole process I followed from from step one all the way through Graham. And, and listen, yeah. I I feel for you guys. And, and this is tearing me apart inside right now to know that somebody took advantage of such a good person and, and good people. You know, I, I and, and I'll tell you, I enjoy seeing how much you guys care about your kids and taking them out road cruising at that age and teaching them all this stuff is is what yeah. what we aspire in this industry to do. And, and I'll be the first one to say that a lot of times we would talk at, at the facility out here that we we don't believe this is a hobby. We believe it no. as an as an industry because it's huge. Yeah. But the sad fact is, is so many people are willing to shit on each other mm. just because they're not getting their five minutes of fame. And it sounds to me like Dennis is, is old and yep. just out of touch with life. Yeah. You know, so, so at this point you've gotten to the facility. Um, Dennis is obviously standing guard, which is kind of funny. No, this, you know? this was his, this was his own. Okay. Snake yeah. House. Yeah. His, his yeah. snake house. Yeah. So he's, he's Elmer Fudden it. We'll, we'll use that. Yeah. Cause I think that's funny. Um, so he's yeah. Elmer Fudden it out there and, and you're just like, the, the fuck is wrong with you? Like, yeah. first of all, if I buy something, it's mine. Wait, I'm we're, right. we're, yeah. What, what? It, uh... Damn right. Um, we were just trying to understand what the hell he was talking about, but he gets excited to where he's talking in riddles. <laughs> then, then he starts bashing my ego, saying I've got an ego and all of this crap. Now, if anyone knows me, I've got like the lowest self-esteem of anybody, really got a low opinion of myself. And I don't know why, maybe it's childhood things or whatever. But he, he every for the as soon as I got out there, he started bashing and attacking my ego. And I felt like he was like, gaslighting me into like this insecure position you know where yeah. i wasn't like when i wasn't willing to like see what was going on or stand up for myself he was telling me he was going to give me books on how to manage people like fucking take that book and shove it up your ass mate yeah sideways he's he's the one he's the one who goes around saying i can't work for anybody because i'll punch him so we can't work for anybody but i need he's books old. On how to, i need books on how to manage people <laughs> he's 80 years old 80. Who's he gonna doesn't punch? Look, he doesn't look 80, but no, he's 80. No, I'll say that he's a good looking 80. Woo. Yeah, but anyway, Amy stepped in to save the day because I was the red mist was coming, I was pissed yep. off, I was ready to clock somebody. And Amy grabbed me and she gives me that squeeze on the leg when she wants you to calm down. Uh -huh. and she got she crouched down and got to Dennis and she was saying, What are you doing? You know, look, we're here. So we'll be like a family where he and Amy Amy was was putting an act on. She'd had enough by this point. She sure. saw me stressed out and heartbroken every day over what was supposed to be and what wasn't happening. And she just sweet talked him and somehow she she said to him, Look, all we're doing is taking these vipers now. We're, we're gonna take them back to our apartments, take pictures of them, and then we'll bring them back. And he said, oh, yeah, all right, then. And I was thinking, I'll do what I fucking want with them anyway. He said, I know you're broke, but I can't help you. We can't give you any money to get home. I said, I didn't want any money from you. I wanted you to sign that document, which got me friggin' paid. Yeah. You know? And what it got him paid. Yeah, exactly. You know, baffling. But it didn't sort his friend out, did it? It didn't get his property shot yeah. in, in on this deal. Anyway, I digress. We got the snakes cupped them up. My hands were shaking from the adrenaline anyway, so I could have got yeah. friggin' bitten, you know. Yeah, that would have been awful. Cut three grumpy paths up safely and got them to friggin' Little Rock Airport and stuck them in a box and sent them. And luckily, the buyer got them anyway. On the way back from Little Rock Airport, I got a text from Dennis. Now he knew how rare these Vipers were and he liked them. And yeah. He thought, ooh, these are exciting. He texted me saying... I want to give you five grand for them vipers to have in my breeding collection. 
I thought, you've just seen us stressed out to fuck about getting home with our little kids because we're yeah. broke and we've spent all our money getting out here. And now you all of a sudden produce five grand out of your back pocket. Yeah. For an ego boost on three snakes that you just like. Yeah. I thought, you had the money there to help us all along, but you, you don't care about us. You don't yeah. care. The way he said he cared. He'd adopt us if he could. Oh, he loves us as a family. The true colours, the mask had fallen off, you know? Yeah. This was all bullshit. He had five grand sitting there. I told Foley, and he said, fuck, that's disgusting. You know? Yeah. So anyway, we got back, and then I think we, we basically put an act on for the next day or two and said, um, we went round and... Um, he had a mite issue. He said, I've got mites in, in my collection. Chris Foley, when he originally went out there months before, saw mites in his collection. Mm -hmm. um, told him, you know, you've got mites all over everything. He had a yellow rat snake, which is apparently black because it had that many mites on it. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I started treating all my stuff for mites. Yeah. Now I was thinking, what am I going to do if I need to get these snakes out? And who do I take them to? Nobody's going to want them if they're crawling with freaking mites. Yeah. Now, Dennis had a friend there, like a local plumber guy, who was coming around, basically volunteering for him, feeding his rattlesnakes and just reading his books and, like, you know, just basically in awe of Dennis, like I used to be. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's this old old school herbo, you know, who's got all these stories about Carfell and Ross Allen. Yeah, all yeah. Stuff. So, you know... You sort of like um you sort of look up to the guy a little bit and it can he can be very infectious i guess you know especially for someone like me who's sentimental and is impressed by all of that stuff yeah there's not many people not many 37 year olds in the in the herping world know who the friggin hell carfeld or ross allen are but i do exactly exactly so it was all all of that stuff but anyway i go around there and i needed to get my black eyes out of there. That was my project. Yeah. And I had three three females sitting there. One of them I'd promised out to a customer. So okay. This guy had already sent me money for these months earlier. And I just hadn't shipped them to him yet. Okay. So I had to get that one out because it was for a customer. But it had mites and the one. I went round to Dennis basically and I came up with a story. I said, I've got a friend out in Benson who's got an adult female for us and he wants to trade us for three three of these babies mm -hmm. so we went, he said oh this is exciting we've got an adult female now we can make money from and all of this crap yeah and none of them were, were his snakes anyway no yeah so i'm bagging these snakes up and he's got his friend the plumber standing behind me breathing over my shoulder looking at everything i'm doing you know i was like do you want to crawl and he further up my arse yeah. mate, because you know yeah get away basically you're crowding me i bagged three snakes three black eyed females up because the males he still got you know, yeah or whatever has happened with those um but i got them and bagged them up took them to a friend i hadn't even asked the friend if he'd look after them for me or shipped them to the to the customer um and the crawling with mites but i just drove towards this guy's house and said Sent him a message and said, look, I'm in trouble here. I need your friggin' help. I need to get these to you. And he said, Graham, don't worry about it. What's happened? I said, this has happened. And he was, holy fuck. Yeah. Well, the, guy's, what, the guy's wife was waiting for me on the step when I turned up with these snakes. And she saw my hands were just shaking. She, she said, I can't believe what is going on. But, but prior to us bagging these snakes up. Dennis, when we walked in Dennis's snake house, his plumber friend was there. And like he was sat at the table and there was a piece on the table, a gun. Okay. So, so I'm like, I've never seen a friggin' gun on Dennis's table before. This is all weird, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then he's got this contract, um, like scribbled out. He said, I'm going to get Sarah to type this out for us. I said, what the frig is it? He said, it's a, a transfer of ownership. It's you signing the snakes over to me. I said, what? 
why the fuck would I do that? He said, so when you go home, we can like share anything that comes of babies because you're not going to take them home now, are you? Because you've got no money to get home. <laughs> and I said, they're my snakes. I'm not signing that. He said, well, just sign it and we'll go to the bank tomorrow and get it notarized. I said, there's no need for all that. That's not happening. I said, let me just go and see my friend because we're going off for dinner tonight and we're going to trade these snakes. And then as we're leaving, he says, he grabs Amy and says, because he told us this story when we first arrived about the time he pulled a gun on his friend over the election because Dennis is a Democrat and his friends are Republican. Oh, God. Well, yeah, that says a, it all right there, buddy. Well, they made a $100 bet over who was going to win. And when Biden oh, won, his friend wouldn't pay him the $100 he owed him, his uh, Trump fan friend or whatever. Okay. And Dennis went, this was, and it was the, the guy with the properties. Now, Dennis uh, went down there with a low, Dennis went down there with a loaded shooter and pulled the gun on him. And he kept telling us this story. Now, when he told us as we were leaving with these three snakes in a bag, he said, you know that story I told you about pulling a gun on my friend? And he was like, he said, it was that gun there pointed to the gun on the table he said that's what i'm capable of if people push me what pulling a fucking gun hey dennis come pull a gun on me asshole two in the head two in the chest that's what you're yeah. gonna get because i guarantee you i'm faster than your old ass yeah well, he had his friend there for a reason yeah and he had the gun there for a reason and he brought that intimidation for a reason. exactly yeah. that's what it was and um we just went We'll, we'll come see you tomorrow or whatever. We'll sort all this out tomorrow. So we got the snakes, got them to my friends, and then got back. And the next morning, we'd already booked flights home with the money from the paths. Yeah. So that was that was our first thing to do, get the fuck home. You know, yeah, get, yeah. get to where we're familiar. We're yeah. not used to guns. I'm from the UK. We don't know. We yeah. don't see fucking guns. Not, not 100%. Guns anyway. 100%. But especially, you know, at, at the two... Me two small boys weren't there. Yeah. I'd probably just smashed his head in. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But they were. So as soon as kids are involved, everything yeah. is just... Everything oh, changes. You know? Yeah, everything changes. So, we were, I mean, we, we become were, parents first. Yeah, we were up the wall, like, literally going crazy. The next morning after we dropped the black eye females off, my phone was ringing nonstop. And it was Dennis calling me. We looked out the window through the blinds. And he was pulled up outside our apartment, looking like out of his window and then driving off again. And he's ringing me and ringing me. Where's this? I can't wait to see this adult female that you traded for. So Amy got my phone and texted him and said, Dennis, this is Amy. Can you just leave us alone? The baby's been sick. He wasn't. We were just lying. Yeah, of course. But, uh, we had to say what we had to say at the time. Yeah. Um, um, you know, just just give give Graham some space, will you? We've just woken up, and then we're looking out the window again. The kids are having their morning cereal, and you can see him like driving around the block again, like, circling the house. And we thought, this is fucking weird. This is just like what yeah, was going Twilight on? Zone. You know what it was though? It was Friday morning, and he was desperate to go to the bank. For the bank shut for the weekend and get this friggin' document notarized. Yeah. He, he knew somewhere along the lines we we were going home. Right? So we wanted official like notarization of that collection before we went home. Because then nobody could come after it if it was notarized to him. Yeah. So that's that's how his mind works. He thinks five steps ahead of what's gonna come back on him. Yeah. So we never signed jack shit. We ordered a cab and we had a flight booked two days away. I said to Amy, the last of our money now, we're fucking booking a hotel next to Little Rock Airport. But we did. And we stayed there out of the way for fucking two nights. Now here's where things get even weirder. I'm in this hotel in Little Rock Airport, next to Little Rock Airport. And I had an inbox from Randall Berry. I hadn't heard from Randall Berry in about eight months. The last okay. time I'd heard from Randall Berry was a message saying, I've heard you've rented an apartment in Hot Springs. 
I'm going to come down there tomorrow and, and have a tour. Dennis is going to give me a tour of it. Dennis knew I'd, I'd fallen out with Randall. I wasn't speaking mm -hmm. to him. There's no fucking way he'd be giving me a tour of this place. So yeah. I just cut Randall off again. Randall tries to infiltrate everything. He tries to get involved and stick his beak into everyone's business. He likes to be Mr. Relevant. I'm involved. I know all the gossip. I know all of this. I know all of that. Yeah. Now, we haven't told a fucking soul that we'd, we'd left apart from Chris Foley. Mm -hmm. Chris Foley was like, check your rear view mirror to make sure he's not fucking following you on the way to yeah. the airport. So the hotel. Um, so we we check into the hotel. We're in the room. The kids are happy. That's the main thing, you know? Yeah. The, yeah. The stress all that matters. Levels come down. We're out yeah. of that. We're out of that fucking really tense situation. Didn't care yeah. about the snakes then. I didn't care. The kids were safe. I had a message off Randall Barry come up on my phone. Heard you left. What's up? I hadn't told anybody I'd left. So people must think I'm stupid, but I knew for a fact Dennis, who didn't speak to Randall anymore, uh -huh. cut Randall off, fired him. They didn't speak, hate each other, pretend to like each other or hate each other. Neither of them have got a nice word to say about each other. Dennis instantly has gone to Randall to get some sort of fucking story together because he knows Randall of maybe break the ice between us again and, and get us talking or or he'd be able to get to me through Randall or something. Mm -hmm. I said, Randall, I haven't told anybody I've left. So either Dennis has told you or his plumber friend Dan Porter has told you. He said, I'd rather not say. I saw it on a post on Facebook. I said, no, you fucking didn't. Yeah, I said, Dennis, I said, Randall, you're a really, really bad liar. And and listen, for those that are, are watching, I can assure you there wasn't a, pay, a post on Facebook no, because while not. all this was happening that weekend, we were all supposed to get together and meet in South Carolina and go herping exactly. together. Yeah. So beef County, Yeah. All I was told was, hey, something came up. We can't make it. So which is fine. And, and don't, yeah, I don't, I, I don't want that to sound wrong. Yeah. Because had we have known, we would have brought the army back there. <laughs> Period. I should, I should have told everybody, I think, yeah. in retrospect, you know. There would have been 50 race. of us, there would have been 50 of us standing there while, while Elmer Fudd was protecting his barn. Yeah, I think, um, but um, anyway. Regardless. Randall, Randall was, Randall asked what, what had happened. So I said, look. We got, got out of there. He had a gun on the table. He's stolen the snakes. This is what's happened. And he said, maybe you and Dennis should make friends again. And I thought, just fucking go away now, because I know I have a... Yeah, are, you, are you drinking? <laughs> I, thought, I thought Dennis is there with him, asking him to write this stuff. Yeah. Or he's on the phone with him. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't make sense. Him. That I would make sense, born. yeah. I wasn't born yesterday, anyway. So Randall said, I heard you caught a really nice speckled king snake. I said, I did, actually, yeah. I said, go down to Dennis's and get it, get it from him. I'm sure he'll give it to you. And then I think it was about half an hour later, he said, Dennis just, just swung by and dropped off that speckled king snake. So I just instantly blocked him. Yeah. I blocked Randall. Yeah. Now... A couple of weeks ago, I had an email from Randall. Graham, I'm not tr trying to be stick my beak in, but I want to know what's gone on with all this thing in Hot Springs. Dan Porter came down and dropped off this speckled king snake, and he didn't want to say what had happened. That's all I know so far. Right? So uh, it's gone from Dennis dropping off the king snake. Yeah. The Dan Porter dropping off the king snake. Plumber. Oh, he's a, f he's a fucking terrible liar. At least yeah. stick to this at least come yeah. on. Well, Keep he couldn't remember right because he had too much to drink. That's the problem. Because he's fucking, he's loco. Yeah. And it, Anyway, while I was there, a friend of mine, Frank, had two big adult female Borneos, really nice, pretty ones. He said, do you guys want them for the breeding facility? Now I said, speak to our investor because he's the one who's going to make the decisions on what we buy and it's him paying you. Okay. 
So it's $1,900 with shipping and everything for the two of them. I said, speak to the investor. I put them in touch with each other. Investor promised to pay. Frank said, I'll send the snakes. You can pay me when they arrive. Snakes arrived. They went straight into Dennis's snake house. Never to be seen again. The deal went sour. Investor never paid Frank. So Dennis has got the snakes. I never got them. Investor never paid. Now Frank's coming at me for the, for the money for the snakes which obviously I'm flat broke, I haven't got. So who, <laughs> I've come out of this with $1,900 of debt. That really isn't mine. So so hold on, let me interrupt you there. Um, I, I don't know, Frank, um, but I know a thing or two about selling animals. I know a thing or two about selling anything. Um, first of all, you never ship something out without taking payment on it, no matter what. It ruins friendships. Yep. Second of all, if you're put in touch with a money person that's supposed to be paying you, that person is now is now held liable and responsible. And Frank was happy about all of that. Yeah. You know, for, so for a, for a good few weeks. And so then, I get well um, here. Here's the thing. I get where Frank would be upset about not getting his money, but course. maybe pointing the anger in the wrong direction. Of course. Now, I tried to sort this out with Frank because when mm -hmm. I got home. This other guy who was going to put the 200 grand in said, we still want you out here, Graham. We still want to do this. Now, yeah. even though you're home, we can salvage the whole thing. You know, yeah. and the, the original investor was, Graham, come on, man, let's put a plan together. Let's get you back out here. Forget Dennis. Forget all of that. Yeah. You know, and I said, you need to pay Frank for these snakes. So we'll put them in touch with each other. And on the pro and Frank said, you know, I understand that you're trying to rebuild the business or whatever and fund it all. I'll wait until that's back up and running and the 200 grand's in and you can do it. Frank was happy with that. But okay. you know, rumors get around and yep. one of Frank's friends who still I've paid for four snakes from that he never shipped yet is now saying, I'm not going to ship the snakes to you because you owe Frank money. <laughs> so... I've got snakes I've paid for sitting in, in this guy's house and he's bringing up a debt that isn't even mine because he's mm -hmm. a mutual friend with Frank. So it just, it's like there's a bunch of people talking about you behind your back. You yeah. know? And it's never, never a nice feeling, especially yeah. when you've, especially when you're on your ass and you've just, you know, completely lost everything and you're financially fucked anyway for Christmas. All yeah. of that stuff doesn't help. Now, Randall Berry last week, when he emailed me saying he heard from Dan and all this, all I sent Randall back was an email to say, I've been discussing with my attorney in, in Little Rock, because I've hired an attorney in Little Rock now. Mm -hmm. um, and they've advised me that there could be malice behind your emails, Randall, and not to speak to you. As soon as he got that, R Randall emailed me back saying, tell your attorney I'll stick it up his arse. Yeah. You owe Frank... You owe Frank Good nineteen hundred dollars. When are you going to pay him? He wants to know when you're going to pay him. So Randall's claiming he doesn't know ever anything, but he knows fucking everything. Mm -hmm. something, something now is going on with Randall. Randall's involved somewhere. Randall, now this investor who promised to to get us back out there and fix everything, the original one. He's been blackmailed somewhere along the line by Dennis and his property friend over these properties, okay? So now what he asked me to do is sign the animals to him so he could go after them for me legally, you know, to help out or whatever. So I did that. I made a document and I signed it all, but I never got it notarized, which is everything, okay? Yep, yep. So... What I found out was he's been blackmailed and he's turned on me is because Dan Porter, the plumber guy, has been posting this fucking document of mine with all the snakes listed that are in Dennis's snake house all over the friggin' internet now saying now he owns them. That doesn't mean shit. That was yep. just a list list I made for the investor to go after them with legally. But these yeah. knuckleheads think that that is a receipt or something. And, you know... They, they now own the snakes, which is a load of bullshit anyway. Yeah. Nothing's notarized. And I've been speaking with a cop out there in Hot Springs anyway, who's already on the case. Good. There was a show, there was a show me snakes uh, show 
about four weeks ago. Three yeah. of my animals were sold at the show. The animals, the guy who bought the animals is now returning them to David Spicer for me. Good. They're coming back to me because there's decent people out there. Now, the guy who was selling them at the show, this kid who bought them, asked him, who are you selling these up for? He said, a guy in Hot Springs called Dennis. So the police have got this guy's contact number. He's happy to help the police with their inquiries. It's all going to lead back onto this. Here's the sad fact, Graham. There are so many good people in this industry. Yep. But the problem is, is the small group of bad people really fuck us all in the ass. And that's a goddamn, like... It, it's it's baffling to me. Like you know my stance. We've talked about free handling and all that other shit. Throw all that crap yeah. out the window. Because at the end of the day, here's the deal: Florida Fish and Wildlife doesn't give a shit about Tyler Nolan free handling a cobra. They don't fucking care. What they care about, what they care about, is a snake escaping and getting out, and that being publicity. They care about the shit that uh, they care about their own, every single person on the FWC board is a land developer. They only care about their own shit. Politicians are all the same. I I read something today that somebody posted a politician out of Buffalo, New York was a chairperson has been arrested and convicted of uh, sexual misconduct, uh, rape and all kinds of other shit for a kid. And somebody posted, look at our politicians And look at the things that they've done and continuously get away with. And these are the people that we have. I'm baffled. They're the real crooks. Yeah. So we look back at all this stuff. and, And again, for those that are looking to get into a reptile business, God bless you. It can be done. The guys like Justin Kabilka, Bob Vu, the, these guys that are, are running, you know, Garrett DeMeyer, that are running reptile businesses, that are legitimate businessmen, that are guys that, God forbid, you buy a snake. I would almost bet a paycheck that if you bought a snake from Justin and three months down the road that snake died, Justin would refund your money or give you something I don't equivalent. Know yeah. yeah. And, and he wouldn't even think there wouldn't even be a conversation no. as to what it would just be cut and dry. These are good people. Then you have people like Dennis who are taking your animals, giving them to unsuspecting people who probably know nothing about this. They're just like, oh, wow, this guy's giving me a snake telling me, get let's just throw numbers out, get 500 bucks and anything over that I'll give you. But if you look at everything Dennis is doing now, Dennis hasn't once contacted me since I've got home. Dennis is avoiding any paper trail leading back sure. to him. He's using fucking retards to do yeah. all his dirty work for him. And all the while, his hands are clean. Yeah. He's just he's just there, the puppeteer now, getting goofballs like Randall and Dan Paul to, to go online and say stupid things. Randall's yeah. been approaching all of my zoo professional friends. Uh-huh. I'm sending them wild inboxes late at night, probably drunk. Yeah. Um, the truth is going to come out about Graham Batterson sooner or later. I know what went on. I was there for the whole of it. I haven't fucking seen Randall since 2019 at the Arlington show. He doesn't yeah. know shit about what was going on. He's been yeah. pulled back in because Dennis now wants to deflect it on everybody else. Yeah. And, that's, and that's the game here. Now, apparently... The fucking prick is going to get arrested in the next... I was told within a couple of days, this was like a few days ago. I haven't heard from what's going on from my detective out there in Hot Springs, but I'm sure that at least, you know, we'll get to it when they can. Yeah. If nothing's notarized to him, as the copper told me, they're still your property. We They will take those snakes and they'll get them to somebody for me. I've got friends who were willing to ship them to me back in the UK and they can be home. Now we may have lost some, some may have been neglected, some may, you know, have disappeared or whatever. But fingers crossed I can get something back because that was that collection was my livelihood for the exactly. most part. You know, I was I was not just passionate about passionate about it, but there was projects there that I 
they were my projects nobody else in the world's got and i was working them and you know yeah and it's horrible not having snakes you know and it's just it's just i've come back now to an animalless house and it's really shit oh. working on some i'm working on something out in there we've got like an outbuilding a small okay. outbuilding out, yeah i've out seen the there. pictures that's yeah. awesome I'm going to breed like a gecko with my boy, something for him to get involved yeah. in, something to get him started. But we're going to register her as a business. We're going to get an animal activities license. And we're going to sell leopard geckos to pet stores and pet owners. And I can produce a thousand leopard geckos a year and just still keep it like a hobby size. Yeah. And make and make probably the equivalent of my year's salary in, in my job. So and why it, not? And the, boys, and the boys will love it. Love it's it. an easy animal for them. Even at their age, they can take care of them. You can bring them in there and just stand over them. That's it. I can say from having a family of, you know, my, my youngest is 16 now and yeah. having a family of kids here, they've, they've all had their own animals. So yeah. Aiden is really the only one that's truly into it anymore. Uh, my wife has a boa and he's got a couple of um, uh, carpet pythons and a boa, but they're the ones that, nice. I mean, when we did this, my, my wife knew how passionate I was about it. So it yeah. was, hey, you work a lot. If if you're into reptiles, we're all going to be into reptiles. Let's do this as a family. Let's go to shows. Let, you know, if, if we're going to do it, let's do it as a family. This way, there's no disconnect. And, oh, dad's gone on the weekends to reptile shows. You know, we don't ever see him because he works. And yeah. that's what they've done. And and that's, it sounds like the same thing you and Amy have. And, oh, and that's it's just wholesome. It's just yeah. really wholesome and really fun for everybody. I'm sure. my oldest boy now. It's his birthday in a couple of weeks. And we've got him a cage there that we okay. haven't put together yet. But he wants a king snake. So we're going to get him a king snake and make a nice decor in there and Good. have it lit up really nice for him. And he, he's excited. You know, he can't wait. But that. That's going from me having a big collection now back down to we're going to have one snake in the house and I'm excited about it and yeah. doing it right and and doing it with him and feeding him the feeding the snake with him and all of that stuff. Yeah, but it's just throughout the whole thing, like like we were talking about earlier, you see really good people like you didn't even expect to be a supporter of you. Yeah, they come out and they're a ma and and they just lift your spirits, but then. I've got friends in the blood python community, people who I thought were friends anyway, and some of them haven't said a fucking nice word or were sorry about what's happened, Graham, or shit that really sucks. How are you coping? How are you coping mentally? Yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been, you know, I was, I was depressed a couple of weeks ago. I could only me. listen. I, for hold on a second, because that reaction right there, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. What just happened to you is unbelievable. And, and for those, listen, I moved from New York to Florida. I moved down here to run a collection agency. I, my business partner I, is like a brother to me, but things just didn't work out. Sure. So I've been blessed enough to work my ass off to get to where I am today, yeah. but it wasn't always easy. And yeah. And there's been times where it's like, fuck, what do you do? You know, where wh I can remember sitting back and thinking to myself, shit, how am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to pay that bill? How, wh what are we going to do? I remember asking my wife, do we move back to New York at this point? And she's yeah. like, no, we need to make this work. And dude, it's, it's insane to think that people nowadays are just so wrapped up in drama that they don't understand what happens on the other side of it. I think people, there's, there's been people who genuinely like care about what's happened here, but I think yeah. there's people who've been, who've had the popcorn out waiting for, you know, waiting for something bad. And that's just life, you, you know? Yeah. That's just, that 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 happens. Oh, you know? for sure, people, for sure. People are, people are busy, people get caught up, people can't say or do anything, you know, but, yeah. but there's been people that you least expected, you know, really sort of putting us putting themselves out there and being supportive. And I appreciate it, everybody who's done it. Chris Foley, I love you. I don't yeah. think I'd have got, a th got through this whole thing without him. There. That's awesome. Because, you know, when you just like, you, you play it all back or whatever, and you second guess what you could have done. Should, yeah. have, should we have done this? Should we have done that? And me and Amy have been doing that for the past two months, Paul. 
we've been waking up in the middle of the night like you're having a dream that like you're back in that situation it's like yeah. post-traumatic stress it's like yeah you know oh, for sure should we, should we have done this should we have done that in the end of the day there was really nothing else we could have done you know we would you can we you can monday you can monday morning quarterback all this whole situation and from what you've told me, I can sit here in my mind and say, well, if you would have done this, if you would have done that, if you would have said this, if you would have did, yeah. like, as you were telling me about Amy being sweet and just, Hey, you know, listen, we just want to take pictures. I would have gone the direction of, Hey, I want to take half of the animals because we're going to do all these pictures and we're going to make money to get yeah. back to you. And, and I would have brought 20 animals out of there, but, yeah. but again, we can Monday morning quarterback this all day long. In, excuse me in that moment the thought process is and, and amy god bless her for thinking ahead to think hey all we need is those animals right now so that we can get our tickets back home and get back to normality she 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 was the one who told me to get the black eyes out of there she said yeah. you are not giving up those friggin females there yeah that's you you know yep. that's your project and it's gotta it's gotta do something for somebody but it's not gonna be for that fucking guy anyway yeah and and it's listen it's sad to it's for somebody to put faith in someone and have this happen it's a it's it's devastating so yeah. like i said i moved to florida it's 1200 miles i didn't move from one side of the earth to the other like you guys did so at the end of the day the collection agency thing did not work out and yeah. and we're still me and frank are still friends we separated on good terms and, and I love him like a brother. He's, he's just, he's a great individual, but it just didn't work out. So our story is different from, from what you've gone through. And, and it's, it's terrible to think that again, people just, man, I can't even wrap my head around this, Graham. I, I really do, do, can't. Do you know what the, the the real issue for me is with it, with with the Dennis thing? The guy is sitting in like a half a million dollar house. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The guy's lived his whole life. He's fucking 80 years old. You know, he dresses well. He eats out every day. He's got a nice lifestyle there, right? I was willing to put my whole life on hold for four years. Yep. We didn't buy a house on his advice. We didn't buy a house here in the UK. So we went mentally settled anywhere we yeah. didn't get married yet there was a lot of things we put on the back burner because we knew this was like the end goal out in hot springs before the breeding facility was ever you know we he had our loyalty i was his number one friggin yeah. in command soldier there his right arm to do everything for him yeah and i did that blindly loyalty and love is blind yeah. and i was blind i, I you know looking I was blind now, but here's me, a 37 year old guy with, with a young family, two small kids trying to just make something of my life. And you've got a fella who's lived his whole life in affluency and, and comfort. Yeah. Who's got everything he needs and more who wants to fuck over the young guy trying to make something of himself with it for his kids. It so, makes no sense. And it wasn't financial. I didn't want to make something. Of, I, that's why I've offered him half of the fucking money because I just wanted to get out there and be in the woods and yep. be out and in be the woods with my kids, with with my kids, and just live a wholesome lifestyle by the lakes and go camping. That's all I yep. wanted to do. You know? Yeah. And now yeah, I'm back I, in England, in the rain. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So yeah. so now this investor that the the two hundred thousand dollar guy, not the original guy. But the, it, what is what has transpired as of now? What is he? Where is he at at this point? Well, because he's not actually in the original deal. The original deal is still there. Or the original uh -huh. investor, who's now being blackmailed by Dennis and his property friend. And here's another fact I found out when I got home. The property is called Monolith uh, Properties in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Dennis is named as one of the owners of the properties. So now you can see what's yeah the writing is on the wall exactly he owes them a this investor owes, owes them a bunch of money he won't take my phone calls anymore now after being all optimistic about getting me back out there and doing all of this thing now he's rejected the calls because i know what he's done 
he sold out to these guys, obviously for a portion of his debt or whatever. Yeah. Maybe he's handed he, he thinks he's handed my animals to them. Well, he didn't fucking own my animals. No one does except for me. Yeah. So, but that's why he's a coward. He's a coward. This guy, you know. Yeah. Well, God bless Plain him. He's got, fam- he's got a family like me, and I understand he's got to make decisions for his family. But what he's done is the wrong fucking decision, and he sold out the wrong person. Now this other guy, his friend with the two hundred grand, wanted to put in. I'm still in touch with. He's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. I think what he said to me was, we're never going to do this animal attraction thing if it ever happens with Dennis, but we'd like you to maybe be part of it. Now, I could still do that. I'm not going to, you know, make a drastic rest decision in the near future because we've been through too much already. But I've got good people over there who I know could run something like this and I could maybe give that opportunity to somebody else. Yeah, exactly. At least, why should, why well, should I so, take that opportunity? So, so here's the thing: if, and this is opinion, not necessarily what everybody wants to hear, um, but it, it, Texas is a great place to open something like that because Texas is pretty much the Wild West still. You can have <laughs> anything and everything <laughs> right now. So, if this guy is in Texas, the smartest thing to do is be in his backyard so that he can. Mm-hmm. He can visually see what's happening. And exactly at, at the end of the day, you know, Graham, you've worked really hard to get to where you're at and, and you've got a great family and you've got a good plan. And we've talked about this and I, I, I believe in you and I believe in your family, but Thanks, just at the end of the day, it's, it's all about cutting those people out. And for the original investor to let somebody blackmail him, Makes yeah. zero sense unless he's being promised some big windfall and he, he's obviously not going to get it. He's obviously yeah. been promised something or he wouldn't have done this. He would have been smart enough to say, hey, no, I'm not doing that. You know, kiss my ass. Let's, let's just say I don't think the fella is very smart with his investments anyway. No. I think he spread no. himself too thin. Yeah. But, um, you know, pe- people could – People can have an opinion on what, what I did. And, you know, it was a risk. And I took balls, me moving my family out there and, and trying this. And there was people, you know, the naysayers, we've all mm-hmm. got them. Yeah. This this will never work. Well, I hope they're happy. It never worked. Yeah. But guess what? I made a business plan. I got an investor. I pursued a dream. I had the guts to, to do something with my life instead of yeah. sitting there bitching about what everybody else is doing. Yeah. So what? It didn't friggin' work. So what? I dared to dream, and I had to go. Well, here's a here's the thing. Can't say the same thing. You're a smarter person, and you're a better person today than you were six months ago, because you have learned valuable lessons. So for all those people out there that sit on their couch at night and flip through the TV channels, and that's listen, I'm one of them because yep. I enjoy my job. I like my job. I have no problem with it. I always tell people I'm not in the reptile industry. I, I am the hobbyist now. I used to always want to breed snakes and, Oh, I want to do this. I want nothing to do with that. If, if, if I produce, and and I'll just say this, if I produce a venomous snake, it would go to a lab. It would go to, because I'm not going to sell to the public. I saw what happens when I, when I produce retics and, and all the vetting you have to do with people. And, and you know what, honestly, I don't want to deal with that. So no offense to the public because I love you guys, but at the end of the day, that's just not for me. I love my job. I love my family. I love what I do. And I'm just going to continue to do that. But you have a passion for, for what you've designed and you've put together a plan that obviously can work. Yeah. Do I, wanted, I, I wanted to bring new ideas into her. Sure. Show. I wanted to bring a new species to the forefront and like, you know, we need really, that. really break some ground on things, you know, and, and I, like you said, if you produce babies, they would have gone to a, a venomous facility yeah. If I never had to sell those parviocular, they would have gone straight to Kristen and Jim. Yeah. You know, that's that that's yeah. just what, what I really would have wanted. I've given away more snakes than I've ever sold. Yeah. 
along the line, there's there's that kid out there that you give a snake to. That changes their whole life at some sure. point. You know what this hobby does to young kids and and you know just keeping something and the whole responsibility of it. Not yeah. only that, just observing something. See, it goes from a kid who likes to burn ants with a magnifying glass to a kid that cares about care, you know, yeah. about an animal and what it does and what it does in the wild and what it sees and and just learning about something that's totally not human, the other end of the spectrum, and they learn from it, you know, and it and it, it certainly did that to me when I was a kid. Yeah. That's, that's my whole passion for the hobby. Now, looking through the eyes of my five-year-old boy, who's yeah. asking desperately for a king snake or something or a Bradle's python or whatever. He wants to hold everything. He wants to look at it. And, and you see that look in his eyes. It's just a, you know, it's it just, look, it's like looking at me again when I was a kid, yeah. you know, and I get, I get emotional when I see it and all of that stuff. But, you know, you know I, that's, I was talking with a good friend of mine uh, probably about two weeks ago now, and he owns a pretty profitable reptile pet store here in Florida. Yep. And, and he was telling me that sometimes as a, as a store owner now, and, and, and now it's a job, it's, it's no longer, you know, I think there's that honeymoon period where in the beginning it's a passion and then it turns into work. Yep. But he told me that as difficult as it is, he has to remind himself to get excited when he sees somebody else get excited. Yeah. Because that's what it's all about. Exactly. And and I, I could only give him credit for that because, damn, if there was more people out there, like I know people that have said, God, I don't, they'll pick up their phone and look at it and be like, God, I don't want to talk to this guy. He's like so <laughs> excited about reptiles. And this is just a conversation I don't want to have right now. I, I'm, But it's like, how do you, you know, like I don't have a lot of animals here. I have a small yeah. room. But when people come over, I want to bring them in here and give them the experience that excites me. Yeah. You know, I don't want to ever get to that point where it's like, oh, God, somebody else is coming. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to have to you, show them this. You know, when you're a kid and, and there's that first like trip to the zoo and you first have a walk in the yep. reptile house and every single cage is like just a new wonder. Yeah. I, I remember being a kid and, you know, yep. maybe five or six or and go and and you'd see a ball python in the zoo and yeah that that was the most friggin amazing thing you'd see and 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 now we sort of take it for granted don't we we yeah we, we we're desensitized to what we see online because we exactly have computers now and we've removed ourselves a little bit from that but it's desensitizing but now because we're seeing things every single day it's sort of like you know, it loses the wow factor unless yeah. someone puts up. This is this is the only one of these in captivity in the world, and then everybody goes, "Wow, look, it's the first yeah. ever bred." You know, everyone's wowing at the new thing. But remember, I, what I always say to everybody is, take yourself back to when you were that little kid and your first trips to the zoo, and just realize how fucking lucky we are. Really, yeah, just be able we to are have lucky. These things, you know, and and we we do take it for granted, and and damn, like. I, I can't even wrap my head around the fact that I have animals that I absolutely love. And there's always that cloud looming above us that, you know, we could lose this response. We could lose this responsibility in a second. And, and some people just don't understand what, when I say that they don't understand. They're like, Oh, it's no big deal. I can do this and I can do it. No, stop for a second. Just yeah. think about it. When you were when you were at home and you did when you were little and you did something and your mom took something away, how did that feel? Fuck it sucked. And you know, and to get your ass beat for doing something stupid. And and this is the same thing, but in the adult world. You know, this is yeah. now you're not a kid anymore losing your toy. You're an adult losing your passion. Losing and your privileges, yeah. Yeah, losing your privileges and and it sucks. And it, again, back to investments and, and people getting involved with, with things like this, it, it strains and breaks relationships. And unfortunately, you know, you got caught up in the middle of something and, and I don't care what anybody says, I will 100% go to blows with somebody that says anything negative about this. People don't understand when you get into that mindset that I put a plan together 
on paper, it looks good. This person's willing to get involved. And then all of a sudden it turns to shit. Everybody wants to say, Oh, I could have told you that. Well, you know what? You you definitely did more and have bigger balls to move your family around the world and take that chance. And there's nothing wrong with that. Why? You know, my son's 22 years old and he'll ask me, should I do this? And I'm like, you're 22 years old. What's the worst thing that can happen? There's a, there's a funny story as well with um, following all of this. Now, Chris Foley knew Dennis and his wife because he stayed there one night. I got him put up there one night when he was delivering cages to us. Now, a couple of months before he stayed there, I bought Dennis a super hypo copperhead as a gift from yeah. David Spicer at the FW Reptarium. Now, you're looking at like a $2,000 snake. Yeah. I bought, that, I bought that for Dennis as a gift. That's what I do for people I care about and, and yeah. respect. When Chris Foley went there, he liked the copperhead, and Dennis said, well, you can have it or something. He, Dennis totally forgot that I bought him it. But anyway, I didn't care if Chris Foley got it anyway. I'd have been happy yeah. to get it. But recently, Dennis messaged Chris Foley saying, I've saved that copperhead for you. Now, I think he wants Chris to build cages for him or something. I think they're still working on maybe opening a breeding thing, but with Dennis now involved, considering he wasn't fucking interested. Yeah. This is how they're shaking the investor down. He said, I've saved that copperhead for you. I got it from the NARBC at Arlington. You can have it. Now, anyone with a brain knows Bob Ashley and Brian Potter do not allow the sale of venomous fucking snakes at their shows. So he's already exposed himself again as a fucking liar. Yeah. A liar. And anything he's putting out there through Dan Porter online or Randall Berry is all lies. Dan Porter put a post up, the plumber guy, that we trashed the apartments when we left. We didn't trash the apartments. We took all the stuff out and went. Yeah. Because we were being fucking harassed, basically, and stalked. He also said we trashed, we were borrowing Dennis's car while we were out there. Now, Dennis was trying to sell me the car. He thought he was going to get some money out of this investor for it, which is the whole reason he borrowed us the car anyway. He said, we trashed his car. We wouldn't we, we didn't, wouldn't dare trash his car because that would come back on us yeah. in a foreign country. And why the fuck would we do that in front of our little kids? Yeah. Just the, don't... Lies they, the lies they've been putting out there is just unreal. Now, I don't think most people would believe them. But I'm telling you, they're not fucking true. It's ridiculous. But yeah. there's the odd person out there who maybe wants to believe this bullshit or maybe people who think I owe them money may want to believe all that. Crap. He's got his it's minions. He's got his minions and the people that will believe believe what this, he's saying. This but... is what Dennis does. This is what yeah. Dennis does. He gets the pieces and gets everybody dancing while he stands back and everyone's doing all the dirty work for him. Yeah. He throws the shit at the fan and then ducks. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's him. And whatever six six. I used to say this all the time. You, you grab a handful of darts, you throw them up in the air. Whatever hits the ceiling and six is good. Just don't get hit yeah. by the ones that are falling because that'll exactly. suck. So, you know, Graham, it's been great to have you on and, and discuss Thanks, this. And I hope at the end of the day, you get all of your animals back. Yeah. Um, and if there's anything that any of us can do over here, you know, we're, I'm literally a message away. I am, there's a group of, we'll do whatever we can for you. Um, I appreciate you, Paul. You are a brother and I appreciate everyone who's reached out as well. And really, you know, when you're down in the depths and you feel low and life sucks, there's people who will pull you back up and they have done that for me. Me and my family appreciate it, you know. All right. Well, let me go ahead and sign off here. Everybody for real. uh, We're here with Graham. We're going to go ahead and get this posted. Any questions that you have, please post in the comments. Uh, Shoot me an email, shoot Graham a message, shoot me a message. If we need to do a follow up, we'll definitely do a follow up. But, you know, we we really appreciate, you know, everybody's support for Graham and his family uh, out there with all the negative that has happened. Thanks, Mom. One second. I forget how to do it.